What's up, y'all? Stud Doogie here with Chapter 2 of my Dead Space 2 No Damage Run on Zealot Difficulty. If you started watching this series in the middle, stop now. Play this game. Play it alone in a dark room with surround sound, either a theater system or headphones. Do not let my playthrough ruin this game experience for you. It's a, it's a survival horror game that's really good. It's scaring the shit out of you, so at least have that full-fledged experience. Don't get it watered down by watching some content first. So uh, in Chapter 2, we're going to be making our first set of upgrades. As you see, we're right by the node room. I just restarted at the checkpoint because I want to get the, uh, the Ruby Semiconductor. Ruby Semiconductor has a value of 10,000 credits versus the gold which only has a value of 3,000 credits or no uh, conductor at all in the room. So in case you didn't know, the contents of those node rooms, the supply chests or supply closets, I think they're called, um, are randomized. So they're not always the same. Therefore, it's a good idea to save before you open one of those. And we're in a fortunate position that the, the place where we needed to save at the end of Chapter 1, beginning of Chapter 2, was also right by the node room. Uh, so we're going to be selling off our junk and um, start upgrading our gear. Now, there are two ways to go about doing a no damage run. Even if it's not a no damage run, like a, a no death run or something like that. You can either invest in your stasis unit and upgrade your um, your basic gun, the uh, the plasma cutter. Because that gun will take you all the way to like chapter 12, chapter 13, pretty much. So you can invest in stasis and then control the, the battlefield by freezing things and shooting their joints using your, um, your plasma cutter. Or you can take the approach that I've taken, which is to early in the game buy a powerful weapon and upgrade that powerful weapon and get it out to max as soon as possible um you know i prefer the non-stasis kind of style i think it's a little bit more uh challenging and so i use stasis sparingly and more more towards the end of the game or towards the mid towards the end of the game than early game uh, so that's why I spent all my power nodes on um, upgrading my javelin. And the javelin is an excellent weapon because it's not only good for single target damage, but it's also good for crack control. Now, what I'm about to do here I know is kind of fucked up, but I just think it's funny as hell. So let's see what happens. Back the fuck up. Get away. Back up. I know it's fucked up, right? I mean, he wasn't going to get in anyway, but... It's kind of fucked up. I like stepped on him. But you know, if it's between me and him, it's going to be me. He's got to go. So uh, this is one of the spots where just kind of knowing the uh, how things spawn can be useful. So we're going to we're going to melee the enemy that's going to crawl up here on us. Uh, so this would have to use any bullets if we wait too long and he has like his chest pops up then the melee won't work so you have to melee his hand for that one hit knockoff now this right here is glitched so sometimes an enemy will actually come out of the door and other times the door will just explode and there's no enemy there so um and it actually will count as damage but you know for a no damage run there's nothing you can do about it there's it's just part of the mechanic you will get knocked down by that enemy period so there's been one instance where i did it and uh, it counted. I got, you know, damage. Because like, what I do from time to time is I'll hit the Q button when I have um, um, some healing juice just to see if I've taken damage. Um, so when you don't take damage, it just lights up and nothing happens. You don't hear the audio cue, the bloop, bloop, bloop sound that tells you that you took some healing juice. Um, so I've done it before and it registered as damage even though you know there's nothing you can do about it so what i'm doing here now is i'm setting up for this fight so we're going to break all these glass and get the panes and line them up and uh, we're going to use them to supplement our ammo um, and kill enemies with it i've taken the trash can out of the room because sometimes the enemy will spawn on the left and then you're trying to pick up 
um, you know, one of the projectiles and you'll pick up the trash can instead. So it's just simpler to get the trash can out of the way. So here we go. So they're going to either spawn directly in front and to the right or to our left. So if spawn in front, so just hit them twice. At this stage in the game, you'll require two. So we're going to pick up again. And the spitting guy can either spawn to the right or to the left. He's going to spawn right this time. So once again, just hit him. Sometimes you got to hit him three times. Now, the reason I haven't picked anything up for this one is that the we need to use telekinesis. And we don't want to have the thing in our hands. I mean, not telekinesis, stasis. We don't want to have the thing in our hand um, while we're trying to do stasis. So once that's done, it's pretty easy. You just pick your stuff up and murder them. Yeah, and that's it. Now, this room, and what makes uh, a no damage run interesting to do and not boring is the fact that the spawn variations are different. Like, this is not the way they will always spawn. Like I said before in, that, in the first encounter, uh, that first part of it, instead of landing in front of us and to the right, it could have just landed directly to our left. And sometimes the fast-moving uh, necromorph will come out of the left. So I always shoot left. If it's the fast-moving necromorph, then he'll get slowed down and I'll shoot the guy on the right. But I always shoot left because I don't want to have to swivel twice because the fast-moving one really moves fast. So you're better off, even if you slow down the slow one and then just shoot the fast one, than trying to swivel and identify the fast one first. All right, so we're just gonna be running through here. That's like that 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 fight we just did is the first swarm fight. You know, most of the encounters are set up in a one on one kind of basis, but that one is definitely our first swarm where they try to overrun us, and you just have to be smart about how you play. So we're gonna get jumped here. That's why we're clearing all this out, and this cracks me up to no end. So we have. You can knock him down with that. Shoot off his arm, shoot him in the chest, he's done. Get our loot. I realized after going through, because I'm up to like chapter 12 or 13 in the recordings, uh, I haven't done the commentaries for them because I'm doing the commentary separately. But as I kind of look back and try to think about, think about what I want to talk about in the commentary, I realize I can never do a speed run because I just love my loot. Like I have to go back and stomp on things and pick things up. I just like running past stuff. It's just not my DNA, man. So yeah. So once you kill these two guys and head towards the door, then the, the guys with the, I guess what you call that, like a, the sack on their hand are going to spawn. Now the, the AOE on the explosive sack is pretty large. So we're going to utilize that in this context coming up here. But I'm also doing something stupid. So I'll, I'll show you what that is. If you're going to do a run, don't do the thing that, I just did, that I'm about to do. Okay, so this guy is going to spawn. I'm going to pick up this thing. What I'm going to use it to do is to slow him down so his homeboy can catch up to him. And then I get a twofer. Shoot one. The AOE is wide enough to kill the other guy. Okay, so this is the stupid thing that I'm doing. I'm standing all the way back. If he takes one step forward... So if I had missed that shot and he took one step forward and then I shot him again, it would have caught me in the AOE. So what I should have done is stand back here where obviously I'm running forward, but back in that back area where I've got all the space in the world, but whatevs. So I would recommend if you're going to duplicate this, that you stand in the, in the far back zone instead of doing the dumb thing that I did, which is to stand by the door. Because if you miss that shot and he just takes one step forward and then you shoot it, you will get killed. Or at least I did. So um, now there's a there's a there's a more ammo efficient way to do what I'm about to what I'm doing here, because what you, what I could have done is just broken all of the um, what I'm about to do. That you can do it from the outside by using uh, any object and just you know shooting it at it, and then using those as a weapon instead of uh, actually shooting him. And the interesting thing about shooting him with the javelin is you actually have to wait until he's mounted the corpse and start doing his thing to shoot him. Otherwise, it'll hit the wall, like hit the door and not him. It's really weird. 
the hit detection on some of this. For example, if an enemy is right on top of you, the javelin will go through them without actually making contact with them. So be aware of that. Two, distance matters. Now, I don't need every single one of these, but like once you start breaking shit, you just want to keep breaking shit. Well, at least that's how I operate. Just, just break it. And plus, it just gives you um, plenty of options. Because in the thick of it, sometimes they will disappear or they will go under something. So having more instead of less just means you have more opportunities to find something to use. I should also point out that if you get zapped, mean, meaning that the, the timer runs out on the hacking box, it will count as damage. Now, if you get it wrong, if you make a mistake and activate the wrong thing, that doesn't count as damage. But getting zapped by it, uh, that counts as damage. So in this, you want to turn around because there's going to be two more spawning. So as soon as you kill the first guy, run ahead so that you can trigger this guy on the left. And then there's going to be a spitty guy on the right. You can catch the projectile, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to tag his ass. Yeah, just run ahead, stomp, get your stuff. That was three, and he was like, I'm still coming. You don't want to take too long, because if you take too long, there's a spitty guy that spawns in this compartment that will come after you. So just, yep. You can keep going here. You can stop. If you stop and slow down, more will spawn, but we don't want any more to spawn. We're trying to get to the hard part. So the part that's coming up here is... Uh, had a lot of trouble with it because it's just... Your aim is off. Your aim is restricted. So sometimes it's a pain in the ass. To nail it. All right, we're going to wait for this guy to spawn. And we're not going to shoot him immediately. Wait for his homeboy to show up. Then we get a twofer there. This is also another area. If you just stand around, more will spawn. But if you move through it quickly, you can trigger the next event. And the first time I played this, I kept on trying to shoot everything as I was sliding down. Which you don't need to. Just, just slide. And uh, this is the first instance of Isaac being the luckiest motherfucker on the planet. Because what are the chances that you are sliding down a freaking train and you don't hit anything that kills you and you don't fall and break your neck and you are hanging by your freaking ankles just safe, right? You didn't like pull your leg out of its socket. You didn't rip some tendon. You didn't do anything. You're just like, I'm all good. Isaac just won like a son bitch. All right, so you want to get this? I get this guy first, because then I can zap these two. See, missed him. Went right through him, even though I was right on top of him. And that's it. So once you get this guy, you get. Except for the boss, make sure you shoot him in the yellow spot, or you could just shoot him in the face if you have a lot of ammo. But I prefer to shoot him in the yellow spot. And um, we're good. I really like these set pieces things. You know, you're not doing anything per se, but I just think they're really well done. And once again, Isaac just being lucky, escaping that environment unscathed. All right, so that's the end of chapter two. Uh, we're going to pick up some loot, and then um, we're going to save, and, um, you know, we'll catch you in the next video. Uh, don't forget about the node in this room. And then that'll be the end of that. So we're just going to go pick this node up. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's it for the commentary. Uh, thank you for watching. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Laters.